Hello, welcome to our second show. Uh, it's 420 somewhere, and if you are watching this and you have seen the original, you are officially a regular, which uh, is, there may be none of you, there may be one of you, but if there are, thank you and welcome back. So our first story is about a California bill that has not yet come to pass, but it probably will, if not now, then sometime in the future, because it's focused mainly on a pretty antiquated belief system on what marijuana does that probably came from the hippie generation, where you would link marijuana with being a hippie, and that meant you didn't want any hippies on your job. But basically, this is dealing with drug tests, and the drug tests that, were, that, that test your urine and your hair to see if you have had marijuana in your system in the past, you know, whatever, few days or something. And they're going to make it illegal to discriminate against anyone who has marijuana in their system. Therefore, you cannot terminate them or you cannot not hire them because of having marijuana in the system. Again, it makes a lot of sense. And it seems this is only a matter of time for this to be kind of brought up in not just California, but in every state. There is an exception, uh, blood screenings, which don't test if you have had marijuana in the past. It tests if you are actively high right now. Those are exempt from this bill because there's a difference, obviously, between being high and on the job and, uh, you know, having had marijuana maybe last night or whatever, which would have nothing to do with your ability to do the job now. So it's cool to see lawmakers finally get rid of that antiquated way of thinking about weed. Okay, here is a TikTok that has nothing to do with the subject. No, it just feels like a little palate cleanser. Okay, next story has to do with MedMen, which is a company that uh, is beyond California. It's in Florida, Illinois, a whole bunch of other states, but it started in California, so it really feels like a, another California story, but not MedMen. It's, it's dealing with the co-founders, which is a Adam Bierman and Andrew Maudlin, who made a whole big stink a couple of years ago when they were forced to step down as CEOs because they were essentially getting sued by investors because of a misuse of cash, of, of corporate cash. Um, they were spending it on lavish security. They were spending it on these really expensive mansions. One was somewhere in LA and the other was in, in West Hollywood. Apparently there was just a whole lot of shady things happening, especially in the beginning of legal marijuana in California because it was it was just kind of a, a wild, wild west. Nobody really knew the regulations. They were constantly changing. So there was a lot of things that were happening that kind of felt like they were going under the radar at the time, but eventually started to bubble up and they were uh, misusing a lot of their power. So they got ousted from the company and it really felt like they were going to stay down for a while. There was a big Politico write-up that happened afterwards that kind of detailed the entire thing, and so it took it out of just the marijuana world and brought it into the national awareness of what was happening with legal marijuana. All this is to say that they are now coming back up and showing their heads with a new dispensary, Coastal Dispensary, which is a retail and delivery service. Um, they're basically trying to create a, another MedMen, a MedMen 2.0 is how it's been described. Um, they've been working with them for several months trying to get money together. And at first glance, it really feels like they would be someone you wouldn't want to touch because investors wouldn't want to go near them since they've misused cash in the past. But understandably, if Coastal Dispensary is having trouble or, or wants to get more publicity, this is the way to do it because these two clearly have innovation and, and new ways of thinking in their blood because of how they how you've seen MedMen just blow up in popularity since it started. Um, they had these very large billboard campaigns 
that that did very well um and it all culminated with them creating a commercial that was directed by spike jones the director the film director who has in the past made incredible commercials he made commercials for fashion lines for uh, perfumes for mtv um if you go online and see some of this some of his work it's just absolutely phenomenal but they made a commercial with him and as expected it's great it's a great commercial it spans kind of the the history of our way of thinking about weed and so their out of the box approach makes sense i would understand a company wanting to attach themselves to their names just because of that and because they would think we may get some bad press we may have a harder time getting the money together but we'll still have two very creative minded people behind us so we'll see what happens with that it seems like since we're now hearing about it it's slowly starting to to come up and bubble up to the surface and we're going to end this episode not with another tiktok or anything but with that commercial it's just an incredible commercial so i think it's worth watching even if you have in the past it's two minutes but uh it, it it's really good so enjoy Hey, you want to witness some history? Okay, back in the day, George and a few of our founding fathers had hemp farms. Yeah, a president grew his own. Look it up. It was normal. But you know what isn't normal? America's 80 years of unjust prohibition, which hasn't made us any safer. And there's this. They came up with policies like stop and frisk, where anyone can get searched at any... All right, I'm getting a little off track, but the point is... These punishments have been harsh. Like 25 years in a prison, harsh. That's madness. Speaking of, you remember this classic bit of propaganda? Madness? How about wellness? How about everyday good people are using it to calm their pain, their stress, their anxieties? And a product that drove people to the black market is now creating a new global market. That's a lot of jobs. And the same thing that inspired the creators, the makers, and the disruptors. The symbol of counterculture is, at long last, just culture. It's normal again. Here's to the new normal. And to be clear, we're not advertising Mad Men there, but just to separate it from the actual brand, it's just a work of art. So that's our episode. We will see you on Friday. Thanks. See ya.